put record here. So today um, we're, we're talking about converting interest into gymnast, gymnasts and you know ultimately that's the goal, right? All of this cool stuff, all this cool technology, all these great platforms, all these great techniques, all the branding, all the messaging, all the targeting, all the stuff in the world is all great, but unless we convert them into actually business and it becomes something we can actually turn into paying clients, it doesn't matter, right? Um, what we're going to go through today is a collumation, cumulation, I think you understand what I'm trying to say, a, a bringing of together <laughs> lots of data and, and, and information that we've taken from all of our clients over the last, probably, I think we really started working this last two years on what best practices are and we put it together and we've seen the results with the gyms that actually do this process um, and um, do a good job of it. And it becomes part of what they do. They don't get stressed out about it. It just becomes part of how they do things. Now, you can do your own take on it and change it slightly. It's up to you. This is a suggestion. And we, we, we've got it backed up by data that it works if you do it well, right? Um, and it's basically a process that your front desk staff or your, your customer relations people um, or sales team um, would use, and we've seen it time and time again, there's some, we'll be talking about a couple of um, applications that we've, sh we've spoken about before, especially on the first call, sorry, on the first presentation, and we'll, we'll share those with you as well if you want to bring those on board as well, and we'll, we'll go through this. So it should be a really good, useful tool, even, the cool thing that I like about this training is even if you do nothing with, this, with the first three, calls, if you don't do the Facebook, if you don't do anything, I guarantee you, if you, you implement what we're going to talk about today, you're going to get better results because you'll handle the inquiries that you're getting in a much better way that is much more likely to be in tune with the mums of today, right? Now, we're also um, going to talk a little bit about, and I'll talk about it now, um, about what our results would be if we're closed or with the current situation. So, you know, what a result in my mind is with a with any campaign if you're closed is to build that list right to build that list of people that are interested in joining um, if you've got people that are interested in joining and paying right now go for it bring them on board have them pay and say hey as soon as we start that's when your time starts um, but you might find um, better results if you actually work on just building a nice big list of people that are interested in doing business with you. And then when you do open, you, you start calling those people and getting back in touch with them and bringing them on board. And this is where this process will really help, right? So if you run your campaign now, and let's say you're not sure when you're going to be open, and let's say you're in one of the more tougher lockdown um, places, like you, you know, maybe New York or, or Michigan or wherever, um, or I think North Carolina is pretty, pretty, you know, pretty much locked down as well. If you're in any state that's majorly locked down and you don't actually know when your opening date is, um, I think California might come up under that as well. Um, we can, you can still do your marketing. You still get the word out. You can still build that list up. And then when you are able to open, use this process to actually bring those people in and, and, and get them on board. Um, so without ado, I'm going to, um, going to share the screen first before we get into the presentation. And this will, I'll pop this, we'll pop this into the chat. I think Ella or Jessica, if you can actually get the link um, and share it. Into I'll chat. put it in the chat. So here we go, share the screen. So this here is our Kids Activity Center Lifetime Value Revenue Calculator. Sounds really kind of cool but it's it's just a, a an easy it's just a calculator so basically what you do here and you don't need to fill in this information here if you don't wish to um, uh, if you do it sends us the information that you used it and we might reach out to you which is okay too and we're going to be nice to you so don't worry but if you don't want to do it you can actually fill fill this calculation in however you wish right so to give you an idea if i take out this information here um, is you can type in what your average, uh, what your average class tuition fee is, right? So we know that at least with the clients that we work with, about the average is about seventy-five to eighty-five dollars a month, right? Monthly. So if you're a session, if you're doing it by sessions, 
break it down into monthly so they'll give you a little bit of an understanding of what the value of a client is, right? So let's say you're at $85, right, per month um, average. And we have some clients that are at 135, believe it or not. Um, how long does that student stay? For us, what we see is an average between 12 to 18 months, right? Obviously, some kids stay for 16 years. Some kids stay for a couple of months. Some kids stay for one month, right? So, um, but the average is about 12 to 18 months. So we always, I always use 12 months. Mm -hmm. So one, one child, if, if this is the actual calculation, you can change this to one month if you want, right? So make it worth 85 bucks, um, or you can change it to three months or whatever you want it to be. This number here ends up being the value of a, of of one person signing up, right? So let's use the twelve months because that's the data that we know of. Um, some of you might have longer longer average stays, but find out what your average stay is. Find out what your average value is um, per per month, and then this will tell you the average value of each student. And the value of having that number is that you can share it with your team and go, you know, one inquiry potentially is worth $1,000, right? One inquiry is potentially worth $1,000. So if you're getting these inquiries, we, I need you to take them really seriously, right? We, we need to be following up. We need to be emailing. We need to be texting them. We need to be contacting them. And we need to do it more than once, right? And I, I was talking to my wife about this uh, the other day. I said, you know, when we owned our gym, I know for a fact that our front desk, um, which was manned by two mums that were doing it pretty much to get some free tuition, um, they, you know, if somebody called in and left a message, they'd call them back and then they'd wait for them to call back. There wasn't like a second call or a third call or a fourth call. There was no email follow up. There was no, there was not a lot of follow up. And, and I think about this to, to this day and I'm like, man, you know, I, I probably left a lot of dollars on the table. So, what I, the, the, the main purpose of showing you this number is so you can show your team, look, one student is worth this amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're, let's say you're charging $65, you know, that one student's worth $780 to you, right? And then let's say you're one of the higher charging clubs. Maybe you're up to 100, right? You know, one student's worth $1,200. That's real money, right? So let's say, let's go back to the average, let's say about 85. Let's say we're looking, you know, you've, you've built out your platforms, you've got your website sorted out, you've got your Facebook page running really nicely, you've got a, 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 a campaign just, just knocking along in the background nice and consistently to get people interested and get contact, contacting you because they're learning about the wonderful things that are going on in your gym. And let's say you only get let's say you get 20 inquiries a month, right? Which would be an, a, an average number of inquiries. And let's say you do a really bad job <laughs> and you convert five of them. So you're getting a 25% conversion rate, right? That is a $61,200 increase in business from where you are now, right? So that kind of shows you the value of what we're talking about and real numbers. And we, remember earlier, we were talking about you know, what your goals are and what you could accomplish. And, and the fact that, you know, 15% of kids, you know, 15% of the population in your local area are your target audience from a kid's standpoint. And then the work, the job is, is to try to get at least 10% of those on board with you. When you match that, those kind of numbers with this, you can all of a sudden see, you know what, my gym is a very relevant business that could be very profitable and actually fuel some really nice careers um, and give my staff and myself a really good income, right? If I'm honest with you, and, and, and Jessica, please call, call, call uh, I'm going to say a, a swear word, call bullshit if I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, would you say the average client that we work with um, does you know, 12 to 15 new signups every month or more? Yeah, I would say the average client um, that we work with does sign that much, that that many up from, you know, all some people calling, some people emailing, some people coming to the Facebook funnel. But I'd say that's about average right. for those who are good at their follow up and take it really seriously. For right. sure. Right. Now, fifteen doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about it over a year, it's one hundred and eighty growth, right? So if you're doing a, a good job of keeping people on board and you're growing you know, 15 a month, new students, that's above and beyond where you are. So it's growth. 
we're looking at 15 a month. You know, the, 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 the increase in revenue is going to be about $183,000. And that's money that I'd dearly love you guys to have. And what I love about this number is if you're in a, in a market of 100,000 people and there's 15,000 kids in your area using our little, our little rough calculation, 15 kids a month, 180 kids a year is a tiny scratch on what's potential in your area, on, on the potential of your area, yet it'll fuel your, your business by $183,000, right? And if you're not doing what we've been teaching you um, the, the last few days, this is pretty much additional revenue, right? Because you're not doing this. So if you start doing this, um, potentially you have an 183,000. Now we have some clients that are adding 35 a month, right? Mm -hmm. And that, you know, you're looking at that kind of number, right? I, I hate, I hesitate to throw that out there because it's a really huge number, but we do have clients that have started working with us and they, and the, you know, our first ever client when, she, when they started working with us, we're at about a half a million dollars revenue. And I think I shared with you that they started off at about $85 per month yeah. <clears throat> And they and they were at, were at about half a million dollars worth of revenue. They only got eight thousand square feet space. They were able to fill it up with a thousand kids. But not only were they able to fill it up with a thousand kids, but they were also able to raise this number to a hundred. Sorry, to one hundred and thirty-five. Yeah, they're so they were probably able to the highest. That we yeah, so they were able to increase their revenue. You know, at about 35 a month, you know, if we, we use that, that figure by $600,000, right? Now, obviously, that's not growth per year. That's the revenue, yearly revenue grows because of those new enrollments by 680. Because if, if we use the 12 month rule, that means we're losing people, right? Uh, we're losing them. But that is an N number that we can start working with. So I wanted to share this with you. I don't know, um, Jessica or or um, Alar shared this with the group. I put it into the cha into the chat. So if you click on the chat bubble at the bottom of the screen, you can uh, get that link and then you can play with it, you know, anytime. It's also on our website. So it's, it's a really useful tool. Um, and I, I encourage our clients to use it um, so that it, with their staff, because often, like Andy said, it's it's not the owners that don't understand the lifetime value or what a, going the, that extra step can achieve it's it's their staff and letting them know how very important that front desk person and all the all that interaction is because it's it's a really valuable position yeah extremely valuable so i'm gonna i'm gonna start off our <coughs> our process here let's have a look here we go and andy did touch on a point um you know often a lot of some of our some of our clients who struggle when we start to with conversions or or, or with with their follow up and when we do a little digging and I'm asking questions, a lot of it boils down to well my staff's just they're not doing the follow up well you know they're a team mom a lot of what a lot of those things that he mentioned you know it's just it's a parent who's volunteering their time and so it's just really important to 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 listen to this really understand it and, and make sure that it's being applied um, and regardless of the pushback you might be getting in the gym because it is yeah. so valuable. Because ultimately what's important is financial uh, viability, right? So it's, you know, whilst we, we run businesses that are fueled by the heart, the reality is the business is fueled by money and we do need to ha be profitable. We do need to be able to convert every bit of, opportunity that we have, especially right now, right? So like I said, we're gonna go into this, and even if you do none of the generating of interest and you don't do anything extra to bring new people in, I do believe that this little training that we're gonna do here, if you implement this only, will actually improve um, conversions. And as we, as we shared with you, um, bringing one child in a month is worth $1,000, right? to you, which is 12,000, you know, 13,000 additional revenue, which I'm sure right now you'd all love to have at, at the very least. So let's get into this. So we've got, well, let's click on there. There we go. So this is me. I'm going to zip through this because you probably, you know who this guy is. Um, this is my normal presentation. Um, currently the gymnastics marketing group is about 2050. 
and I speak in some congresses. That's me. So, what are we going to cover today? So, we're going to, we, you know, what have we covered? So, on Tuesday, we covered mindset and goals. On uh, Wednesday, we covered branding and messaging. Yesterday, with Russell, we covered targeting an audience. If you haven't watched all those, I highly recommend that you go back and look at those at, at our YouTube channel, or go into the gymnastics marketing group and go through them and review them. Very, very useful, especially when you think that these three things here are what primes and charges what this presentation is, is dealing with, right? And today we're going to cover um, the persona of who you are contacting. It's really, really important to understand who it is that you're talking to and what they, their life is like and how they're, how, how they're dealing with things, right? It's very important. It's very important for you to share this with your team because, you know, if you, if you don't think about who it is you're talking to, you're going to have a tougher time converting them, right? Many of you are actually who, who we're talking to, right? So let me have a quick look here. We've got a few. We've got, we've got an unmuted person. So we're going to mute everybody. Just go unmute yourself when you're ready. Okay. Um, look, we're also going to talk about the five date follow up process. We're going to go through that and talk about why it's important and why we do it. All right. This isn't just opinion. This is data driven. Mm -hmm. Why we, why we recommend that you text phone and email that you don't just call somebody back, that you don't just email them back, that you must text, phone and email. You don't just text them back even. Do it all together. We'll talk about that. And then why you lose when you try to sell over the phone, over text, email, um, or phone, sorry. Why you, why you try to sell before they come in, um, you don't want to sell them, right? <clears throat> we'll talk about that. And you might be like, what does that mean? How, how do you, how do you mean? Of course we've got to sell them. Well, we'll talk about why that's a danger point. So, Oh, that one, that one came up. So converting your inquiries into, into members. So the persona of who we're contacting, I'm going to make this a little bit more interactive. I'm going to ask you guys questions and I feel free to type in the answer in chat. I want to see if, if, if you guys are listening one and I want, and two, I want to see if you actually are following me. So let's ask this question and I won't move on until two people answer. <laughs> um, who is who is it that we're contacting? Who is it that you guys believe typically is the most likely person that we're engaging with? Here we go. We've got yeah. loads of answers. <laughs> nice. Mums, absolutely. Yeah. Right. What we know is that about 90% of the people that we're engaging with are mums. Some dads are there. You're right, Ver Veronica, but the majority of the time, it's actually mums. Uh, and mums are the decision maker in the household. You know, I like to think that I'm the boss of my household, but I'm married to somebody who is definitely the boss of the household. <laughs> I, would not, I would not. She's a gymnastics coach, a high level gymnastics coach, optional. She definitely has a strong personality. She is the boss of the house and I do as she's told, as she tells. <laughs> Sorry, I do as she tells. So, you know, mums are other ones. Mums are often the ones that are trying to figure out what's, you know, what's good for the kids and looking for things and so forth. And oftentimes they're going to be the ones that engage with our outreach. You know, when you do old style marketing with flyers to schools and, and maybe recitals and, and, and go to fairs and so forth, oftentimes it's going to be the mums that are going to be excited. Sometimes it's going to be dads, but oftentimes it's mums. So with that, what do we know about mums? You know, you guys are mums, so she, so you guys probably have some answers here. But what do we know about mums? Give, can give two people, give me some answers on how, what do we know about mums? Mums are busy. are busy. Yep. <laughs> here you go. Busy schedules. Look at that. They are busy. It's like you guys are reading my mind or something. <laughs> So yes, they're busy, so, right? Mums are, yeah. are doing school pickups, school drop-offs, grocery shopping, doctor appointments, dental appointments, tutors, sports practices, you know, you know, everything else. And I'm missing probably 50 other things. And these yeah. are mums that don't actually have another job, right? They've got the mum job, but they don't actually have another job and an employer. They're just These are just mums who, like my wife, who's like right now she's busy. She's out of the house. She's going doing stuff. Um, with, with the little guy. Uh, I don't know what she's doing because I think she can only go, oh no, she can get her hair cut today. That's right. She's, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's not doing that. 
but they're busy, right? Very busy and juggling lots of things and thoughts all at the same time. And it's important for us to understand that. And because most of you are mums or where you're a husband of a mum, um, we need to really be thoughtful about why is it that we need to treat her differently and why we need to support her and helping her do business with us, right? Some of them have jobs as well, which puts another order of magnitude of complication in the lives. Almost, well, all of you are actually in that situation where your mums and have jobs. Those of you that have kids, you are both of these things. And many and of I, them are teachers right now too, yeah, to teachers, add on to that. <laughs> yeah, your teachers, yeah, you've got so many roles and it's a, it's a little bit of a handful, right? Mums don't give out their cell phone numbers for fun, right? Typically, nobody, I mean, I don't give my cell phone, a phone, phone out for fun either, but mums don't share their cell phone information or their personal information, even their email, definitely their cell phone number for fun. If they give you their cell phone number, they've shown a major um, sense of commitment. And part of the marketing process that we just showed you actually is about getting their cell phone number, getting their email address, and getting their name and getting you know, the age of their kids and so forth. So we're asking for information and if they give it to you, we're actually getting a commitment. The only number that's of greater commitment than a cell phone number, in my opinion, is a credit card number, right? So it's very, it's large. Think about how you guys operate. How often do you share your cell phone number out with somebody you don't want to call you, right? I mean, can someone put their hand up? If, does anybody do that? Does anybody share their cell phone number out with people you don't want to be called by? I'm guessing not. If you are, you know, I'd like you to type in there so I know who you are so I can make fun of you later. <laughs> so um, number four, they, they want you to follow up with them. They're busy, right? Think about how you guys are. If you're really busy and you're dealing with a lot of stuff, you want somebody to help you out. You want somebody to, to help get into it. If you're really interested, um, to have your kid join a, a new charter school that's opened, don't you want that charter school to chase you down if you're really, really busy to help you help give you the chance to actually sign up to that charter school? The same as with your gyms. Your gy you guys do magic. You do you really do wonderful things. I've seen kids as a, you know, even though I'm in the gymnastics industry, I'm a rugby coach, right? That's my, my sport that I coached. My wife is the gymnastics expert. I was at the front desk right? When I wasn't at the TV station. So I would see kids develop and just turn into amazing little humans because of the work that you guys do every day. I, I think that, that gymnastics clubs and because of the, the less of the, the focus on um, physical education in schools now, you know, that seems to be getting taken away and taken away and taken away. Mm -hmm. You guys are filling a role that is tremendous and, and, and amazing. And if we can share this with people and get them to be excited about it, you're going to have moms that are going to reach out to you and they want you to put some effort in, right? They want you to follow up. They want to be in touch with you. They know they're busy, right? They know you might call the first time and they can't answer it or, or there might be something going. So following up is doing them a favor, right? Remember, you're always doing them a favor by following up. So that's who we're talking to. That's what you're dealing with. Remember that and make sure your front desk or whoever's handling inquiries really understands that. It's really, really important. You know, make sure that, if, that you have them watch this presentation, right? It's gonna be on YouTube. You can share it with your team as a training tool make sure that they're doing this. It will make a massive difference to the way you're operating before you even um, start actually generating inquiries. So first up, the five-day follow-up process. How does that work? What, why do we do it? So first up, on, day, on the first day that you start running your, your ads and running your, your inquiries, or the first day that you actually start working on this stuff, you, you, you should be getting texts, calls, and emails, right? So if you set up your inquiry process with, with Facebook and, and Instagram or all the different things, you should be asking for you know, for the for people to text you, call you, or email. Sorry, you, you should be asking for their cell phone number and email address. That's mm -hmm. gonna allow you to text them, call them, and email them. And you need to do all three, right? Don't just get their cell phone number and call them. Don't just get their email address and email them. Ask for their number, call them, text them, and email them. There's some really good reasons for this, and it will make a lot of sense to you as we go through this. 
it's important that on that first day to expect no response, right? There's really good reasons why there's probably a high likelihood that, to get no response. That means you're just starting out the process. If you just call, text an email that one time, you're, you're gonna have a terribly low conversion rate because what if you call during the mum checking out at Costco? What if you text when she's in a dental office helping her kids you know, get her, their teeth cleaned? What if you, you contact her when she's doing the myriad of other things that could be happening and she doesn't respond to it, right? Expect no response. Some people will respond, but just know that it's a high likelihood that this will be the worst response time that you get on that first day. And people, also a lot of moms are just, are working regular jobs and they just can't communicate during the day. You know, I, I'm on meetings all day. I'm, so if I get a call about something, maybe from the doctor's office or something like that, if I don't get to it, then I, I just have to find, try to find time later on. So to have that reach out from someone. Yeah, and, really and you might get, get a reach out in, in the after, like at 12 o'clock midday, Jessica, and you're busy in meetings Yeah. and you go, okay, yeah, I, I need to call them back. And then six o'clock comes around and you've forgotten because the kids exactly. are home or you've got something to do and you just forgotten about it and it's gone out of your head. And if, if you don't get that follow up, you might never get back to it. Not because you don't want to do it, but because you've just been distracted by life because exactly. your life is busy, right? People don't answer numbers they don't know, right? So how many of you, answer, if I called you right now, how many of you would answer it if it just came up with the number and didn't say Andy Seely's calling you? If it just came up with a number, anybody's going to answer it? No, right? <laughs> I was like, no way. I never, I'm terrible. Just so you know, if you ever call me, which you're more than welcome to do, guys, but if you ever call me, it's probably going to go for the voicemail. And you know what? I probably won't even check that voicemail the first time because I get so many calls. Um, I do want to talk to you. But I, I'm like, what's this number? Ugh, I don't want it. And I forget it. But if you call two or three times, I'm going to start going, okay, this is important. I need to at least check the voicemail. <laughs> and then when I check the voicemail and I see that it's you, somebody that I might want to talk to, then I might respond, right? Um, but I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not giving the time of day to any number I don't know. And remember the first time you call them, they don't know who you are, right? And many of them won't even check voicemail, right? A lot of that is to do with their, um, with their age as well, right? Because millennials and Z Generation Zs are much less likely to check voicemails, believe it or not. Over the five days, you'll build internal pressure. What that means is not like a bad negative internal pressure, but what that means is over the five days when we're calling, texting, and emailing each day at different times, you know, it's good to do it at different times, but as you, as you do it, the, the, the mom's going to look at it and go, oh yeah, she's, I need to get back to them. Right. That's right. I really want to get little Jesse into this. I need to get back to them. Um, yeah. And it just slowly raises the priority of what you're doing on their list of things to do. If you think about all the things that you guys have to do, you have probably, you know, 25 to 30 things that you have to do each day and you probably struggle to get below 10. Right. So that means 20 things are not getting done. If we are number 25 at the beginning, we want to get up into that top 10. And by calling multiple days in consecutive days, we're actually able to push up into that top 10. So five consecutive days. So if, if, if the inquiry comes in or somebody reaches out to you on a Monday, call Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, text Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and email Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If they contact you on a Thursday, my recommendation is do it on the days that you're open. So if you're open quite busy on a Saturday, contact them on a Saturday. If you're not open, not very busy, um, you know, contact on the days that you're open. So if you close on on Sundays, um, obviously don't don't do a, a follow up on a Sunday. Do the consecutive business days. And Andy, if I could just chime in, um, your staff might feel like that's a you know too much follow up. So it's really important for them to understand this whole presentation so we are recording it I'd, I'd encourage you to have your staff watch this so that they can understand oh you know how much it makes sense how busy moms are because they might say oh five days you know that, that's too much for me to to do but it's really important because the gyms that do this are the gyms that are are just knocking out of the park the ones that we work with yeah yeah it's 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 just 
what it does is it gives a sense to the mum. Think about it from a positive standpoint. We always get a little bit antsy. We feel like telemarketers and stuff. Don't think that way. This person's already said, I'm really interested. I want to do business with you. We know that she's really, really busy. What it really shows is we're interested in you. We care about you and we want you to be a part of what we're doing. We're putting in the effort to have you be a customer of ours. It's a positive thing, guys. And Amory, you, you just mentioned how my team has responded to you really, really quickly. It probably, hopefully it makes you feel like you're important and we care, right? right. And then we really, really do. And that's what I want all of these moms to be feeling about you guys, right? Because the reality is, I don't know if there's many businesses that care about their customers more than you guys do. I just know too many of you and know how you feel about losing one person to know that, that you really, really do care about what you're doing and, and the people that are involved with your business. So there is a lot of love and care in this business and we want them to feel it right from the beginning before they're even a customer, right? Typically when you do this process, you're going to get most, most people are going to engage by the fourth day, right? So feel good about that. Know that if you've got 20 people that are, that are contacting you a week, that the majority of them will have, will have re responded to you by the fourth, by the fourth day. So it's just a process to go through. It's just a process to get your team involved with. And by the fourth day, they will engage with you. Remember while you're calling them, um, especially on the second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, you just throw in a little bit, hey, if you're no longer interested, let us know and we'll, we'll take you off of our list. Or hey, if you're no longer interested, let us know and we'll, we'll stop bothering you. We don't want to be a bother. We want to be a help, right? Just, just share that with them. It does two things. One, it takes the pressure out of the pro process. We don't want to high pressure sales. We're not trying to, to telemarket them. We're just trying to help them. So it takes that pressure out, especially for ourselves. But also it reminds the mum that, hey, you're the one that reached out to us. We, tr we don't want to be a nuisance. We just want to help you, right? So it's mm -hmm. important to just throw that in there on both the text, the email, and the phone call. Because remember, it's important to do all three. We're going to talk about why all three is really important. Um, so we've got why text, phone, and email, right? Because this is something I'm guessing most of you aren't doing. And we, we've got to talk about this because there's been a major shift in the way people communicate, especially over the last five or six years, right? And many of us are operating in the way we used to, you know, five, six years or, or further ago, where it was all about phones and emails. And, and, I, and I do think email is very, very valuable, and I think it should be used in our business. I do believe that the gymnastics industry way over uses email to the detriment of other options, right? I think email should be heavily used, but not, at, you know, not exclusively, right? I think e if you're only emailing with, with clients, if you're only emailing with parents, you're actually not reaching them, right? You're, you're only, but by industry standards, you're probably reaching 20% of the people you're sending emails to. So if you actually care or want to reach the other 80%, we've got to do some other things as well. So we'll go yeah. through that a little bit here. So here's, here's some really cool information. Uh, it was about this time last year, maybe, maybe a little bit longer, we did a little study. We, we, with all of our clients, we added a little, a little part to a lead gen form, a lead generation form where it actually asked, how do you want to be contacted? By text, phone, or email. And this was across about 5,000 mums, 5,000 leads that we generated over a period of time. It was about a, a month and a half, two month period. We generated 5,000 leads. And 84% of them, believe it or not, said they wanted to be contacted via text. So if you aren't texting, you're not communicating with your mums the way that they would want to be communicated with, right? 5,000 across the nation, is a pretty rock solid survey, right? And I wanted to share this with you. So if you're not texting, and that doesn't mean using the, the, the Jackrabbit texting or the iClass Pro texting, that those are broadcast texting, they're really useful with certain things. Mm -hmm. If you want to actually, you, you know, what you want though, is you wanna be able to text them in a communicative way, right? I, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure that, that Jackrabbit and iClass is broadcast, which means the text goes out to everybody and no one can actually respond. You want them to be able to respond, right? And it's very easy for someone to overlook an email coming through, especially if it's a, an account that just gets a lot of 
um, spam emails or from companies. Um, so, but with text, it's really difficult to not see the text. So it's, you know that that person is going to be viewing that text at some point. So this is even higher for mums under the age of 35. So 84 is the average across, across all mums, right? This percentage goes into the 90s when it comes to mums under the age of 35, right? So it's really important to think, how many of your mums are actually under the age of 35? I'm guessing a lot, right? I'm guessing you've got a lot of mums over the age of 35, but I'm guessing you've got a ton of mums under the age of 35. So really important data for you to guys to be thinking about. People communicate in different ways, so it's really important for us to make sure we're communicating with them all. So if you think about 84%, that means 16% want a phone call or an email. They'd rather communicate that way. Um, so it's important for us to make sure that we're, we're doing, um, you know, we're communicating so we get all of the 100% and we make sure that we're, we're, we're reaching out to them. Contacting them in a variety of different mediums increases the chances of a response, right? So we actually had a couple of gyms that were like, wow, you know, if it's 84%, maybe we should be, just be texting. And they, and they felt like they were getting a lot better text response anyway. So they just decided to just do texting and they dropped the phone calls and they dropped the emails. What happened is they had a drop in responses, right? So that was really interesting. And what we found was that the text was the way they would rather be communicating, but the fact that the emails and the phone calls were being made as well was reminding them, was, was building that, that, that pressure of, I've got to res re respond and helping the text responses be higher. So contacting them in the variety of different uh, mediums will increase your chances of response. So even though, I would believe that the majority of responses are likely probably going to be through text. If you start using text, still use those other mediums because it still builds up that, that, uh, that pressure to respond, so to speak. Each has its own benefits. Obviously email is much richer, much more in depth. I would recommend that you don't get too in depth, that you don't get too rich, that you keep your conversations on email quite simple and quite, um, you know, don't do it all flashy. Don't put lots of photos and stuff in. If you're just trying to get them to do something, send them whatever you're trying to get them to do, like a, almost like a text, you'll get a better result. Um, obviously phone calls, uh, you can actually talk to somebody and nuances is able to be passed through a phone call and you can actually have a conversation and build rapport. Text cuts through everything. You usually can reach most, most texts get right through to, to the person. Um, there can be a loss of nuance with text though, right? People can read into how you're talking and, and all, all, you know, that kind of stuff. So, Every, every different way of reaching out to somebody has its own benefits, and we highly recommend that you use all three. We recommend using salesmessage.com. That's a text messaging service that we recommend to all of our clients. It's a really great, uh, really great service. Remember, it's sales with an S, message.com, not sale message. Um, if you type in sale message, you'll get a Chinese website, but I'm not sure what they're selling. It's sales message. Um, it's a great service. It's like $30 a month. If you've got a landline, like a, a, not a voice over internet protocol line, a VoIP line, a VoIP line, um, you won't be able to do this. But if you've got a landline, you can actually um, use the same number that your gym has as your text, as your sales message texting. So it's a really cool product um, that will allow you to communicate with your parents. And you know, I highly recommend based on these numbers that if, you, if you've got a mom and, and you would normally just call her up to say, hey, um, little Johnny is, is, is sick, you might want to come and pick him up. I would actually text him, text her first, and then maybe call her, much more likely that she's going to get that message and respond to it through the text. And the great thing about sales messages is that you can have a backwards and forwards conversation, yeah. right? Jessica, you're, you, you're... Yeah, you can text back and forth. It almost looks like an email thread. So what's nice is if you have three different people working your front desk, you can have it open on many devices. So it can be on the desktop, it could be on your phone, it could be on an iPad, and you can see the conversations happening in real time. So you could tell if, if someone needs to be responded to a text, you can pop in on your phone and respond to something that maybe someone at the front desk sees. And then when they're, they go back and they can see that, okay, Right. so and so has already responded it's just a, it's a really a nice platform and then you can also do things like canned messages and maybe those reminder messages those messages that you send out 
um, often you're, you're able to just can them and just select and send and select and send and just really, it's a good time saver. Yeah. And, and Jill, I just saw you said if, if the gym line is a cell phone, you can use your number. You can do that. My, the issue with that, which sales message, uh, can fix is with sales message, you can actually put the sales message app on all of the employees' phones that would be communicating with the client. You can have it on your phone, you can have it on another person's phone, um, and you can actually have it on a desktop at home. So as Jessica, sorry, desktop at home, desktop at work. So as Jessica said, um, you, know, you can make sure that everybody is being responded to and it's not all on you. Because usually if you've got a, a, a gym cell phone, one person's carrying it, you've got to hand it off and so forth. So uh, sales message, I, I think, is a really great flexible tool um, where you know you don't have to pay a cell phone you know, line um, and it just gives a lot more flexibility. However, if you want to do a cell phone, you know, that's fine too. As long as you're texting, that's the most important thing. I just find sales message gives a lot more flexibility. But texting is going to be important for you guys uh, going forward. So um, I, I don't know why this came in late, but you know, the oldest millennial, and I think you guys have heard me say this, is 38 now. The oldest Gen Z is 24, right? Now, a couple of really interesting things. Most Gen Zs use email pretty much to sign up to social media platforms, and they don't go back to them anymore, right? Most, most Gen Zs use it to sign up because you need email addresses to sign up to things, to buy stuff online but they don't use it as a mode of commun communication. They use Messenger, they use Instagram, they use WhatsApp, they use whatever things going on, TikTok, all the different stuff that's out there. They use those um, to communicate. They don't use emails. So, um, and that's a really high percentage of them. They might check their email when they buy something online or they might do something to sign up to a new thing, which means that you might, they might not check their email for a month or two, right? Um, the behavior is really different between the two age groups. I'm sure everyone yeah. knows it's, I, I'm older. I prefer to talk with someone over the phone. So when I signed my daughter up for gymnastics, I, I called, I wanted to chat with someone. I wanted to get a feel for it. It was just, but then there's other people who are totally fine with getting things signed up right through text. And it's, you want to make sure you're appealing to all ages. Yeah. Sorry, Andy, I totally cut and, you off. And, and as they get older, they're, they're, we're not seeing a, a, a behavioral change, right? So they're not going from, they're not suddenly wanting more phone calls and emails. They're actually wanting less, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you, you see people walking around, walking into lampposts and falling into rivers and stuff because they're on their phone texting themselves all the time texting their friends and everybody all the time. That's where they live. And they're not going to change their behavior to make it easier for you, right? So you have a choice to either meet the behavior that they've chosen to, to, to follow or not get in touch with them and not be able to have them as a client. So it's important for us to be flexible as we ask our gymnasts to be um, and, and work within what those, those parameters are. It's really, really important. And Jill, just to follow up with your quick question, yeah, you won't be able to use a cell number with sales message, right? You won't be able to link them. It needs to be a landline, unfortunately. Um, which, you know, we have, do have, we do have gyms that use sales message and have a separate number for their texting, right? As yeah. long as when you do it, you make, you make sure you're letting people know, hey, it's, it's Jill from XYZ Gym reaching out to you to, to sign up little Jesse to gym or blah, 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 right? So it's really important to go through that. So why you lose when you try to sell over text, email, and phone, right? So this is really, really important. What we found when we really started rolling this stuff out is we found that, especially when we loaded uh, loads of different capabilities for gyms for the first time, what we found is that many of them would start overloading information that just was not necessary. So we'd have some gyms that would send, they would, you, you would see that they'd sent a PDF of prices. They, they sent links to websites. They, they, they sent, you know, you know, they were giving all sorts of information that was just unnecessary, that they felt was necessary, but it was really unnecessary. Um, and basically was putting a, a mums in a confused state of mind. Because remember, mums don't share their cell phone number unless they're serious right? They're not going to do that, right? They've, they've already made a big decision to reach out to you and share their, their, their information. They're 85% of the way to doing business with you, 
right? The only way you're going to lose them is if you don't follow up with them, they get busy and they forget, or they come and they don't like what you're, what you're doing, right? So there's a big chance you're going to be able to get a good conversion if you're doing things right. So a confused mind doesn't buy. Most of you probably have heard the statement. Basically, it means that if, if Jessica comes to me and says, I want to buy your, your widget, Andy, and then I go into a whole bunch of stuff about all the different things that it's got, and she starts going, oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, I, I didn't know that it did this and that. Oh, mate, let me go and think about it. Mm -hmm. I made her confused because she's all of a sudden having to think about things, but she literally came to me and said, I want to buy this, right? All of you have probably gone through that situation where you're really interested in something, and someone then reaches out to you, and then gives you a whole bunch of information. It's overloads you a little bit and you start going, oh, let me just, uh, maybe I just need to think about this a little bit. Typically when we think about it, we actually end up not purchasing, right? Some of us go back and we do do it, but the percentages of numbers of people that actually end up engaging and doing business with us goes down if we, if we get confused. And it can be as simple as giving too many options, right? So what we recommend when you're actually speaking to the mum, so when you know this is when you're texting, when you're emailing, when you're doing whatever, is just get right to the straight to the actual meat and potatoes, which is getting them through the door, right? So your only goal is to get them into the gym, and the way to do that is you basically say, "Hey, I see that you've got a, a three-year-old. Our kinder gym classes are on Wednesday and Thursday at four o'clock and five o'clock. What works best for you?" Right. We had one client who was getting a, an incredible amount of leads, but was not converting anywhere near where she should been converting her inquiries. Um, and so we kind of did, I think you're on the call, Andy, right? We went in and we looked at the sales message, looked at what was going on. And the, the conversations were just, just so they were, there was just too much information. And so we, we helped her strategize, okay, this is the goal. The goal is to get them into the gym for a trial class or because she had a free trial. And so we broke it down to as, as easy as, you know, thank you for your interest. You know, how old is your, you know, cause the, she would find out how old the child was. Um, we have the, the best class for your child is this, we have this day and time or this day and time, which one works for you. And, and then all of a sudden she was just getting so much interest, uh, so much conversion and getting people in and able to sign them up, just making those little changes, keeping it really simple with the goal was just to get them into the gym, not to tell them about pricing or all the classes, just to keep it very slim down for them. I'll, I'll give you a, like a, an example of how we deal with you guys, right? So we ran an ad campaign and our, you know, we did a big ad campaign. And when we first really started using the tech service, we, you guys would respond to that text and it would be, and because you guys are mums, right? So we weren't really thinking this through. We weren't following our own advice. Or well, I guess we, we hadn't really put this, this advice together as, as well as we should have. Um, what we were doing is we were saying, here's a link to go to to, 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 book a, to book a call with our sales team and hit blah, 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 and this and that. And basically, there was you know, lots of inquiries because we, we do really a good job of getting you guys to inquire to us. But no one was engaging with us. And we're like, what's going on? Why is everybody showing an interest? But then they're not, they're not like clicking the link and looking at this and doing that and jumping through all these hoops. And you, we, what, we, what, we, what we tried was we were like, okay, let's make it really simple. So when now you contact us, the autoresponder, and it's, it's an autoresponder says, hey, great to see you. Do you, want us, do you want to talk to us today or tomorrow? That's it. That's all we say. And you know what? Our response rate went through the roof, right? Everybody is saying today at four o'clock, or they say tomorrow at seven o'clock. And then, then our sales team gets in and says, hey, we'd love to be able to talk to you at this time. We'd love to be able to talk to you at this time. And they start that working from that. But just the change from sending, a, sending you to a different link and just asking, do you want to talk now or tomorrow made the massive difference. And that's where the assuming the sale comes through. So it's really important for you guys to be thinking about the classes that you have. And let's say you have seven level one girls classes and you get a six year old that comes through who would be a level one girls gymnastics um, gymnast. And that mum comes through, look at the two classes that you'd like to fill first 
and just give those options. Don't say to the mum, well, we have seven classes at all these different times and different you know, days and blah, blah, blah. That gets back to this here, which is the confused mind um, does not buy. We want to avoid that, right? So we want to give them two options. So you might have seven classes, but you might have two classes that you want to fill out. And you say, hey, we've got a class at one o'clock at five, sorry, at five o'clock on Tuesday and another one at six o'clock on Wednesday. Which one works best for you? If they come back and say, hey, no, neither of those days work, do you have another option? Then you could say, hey, yeah, we do have a Thursday at five. Would that work good too? And you just keep it simple, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there's some psychology in sales that says that don't ask three questions or more or one. It's weird, right? Three questions or more is like, wow, there's loads of things to think about. Maybe I should go and talk to my husband about this, right? Uh, because, oh, I don't know, whoa, what day? Maybe I should look at my calendar. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who seems to be the magic source, right? Um, one, if you just ask one question, feels like a big close, a big event. And then you get back into that, oh, oh it sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm signing up to something. Oh, maybe I should talk to my husband. The magic, there's something magical about saying, hey, would you like this or would you like that? It's both coming to the same place, which is a sale, but they feel like they're getting choice. If they do not want to do business with you, which obviously they've showed loads of signs that they do because they've done, they've answered phone calls, they've contacted you through text, they've given you their cell phone number. There's lots of signs that they want to do business with you. But let's say they decide not to. They'll tell you. No one's going to sign up and give you their credit card number and sign waivers and everything if they don't want to anyway. So it's okay to find out that they don't want to. So just assume that they're going to do business with you. What you're doing there is you're just helping them, right? You're not selling them anything. You're actually just helping them become a gymnast, helping their kid become a gymnast and helping them become a, a future team mum maybe, right? So give them two options. Hey, we have kinder gym on Saturday at 10 a.m. and Tuesday at 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. You know, what works best for you, right? Just keep it simple. The simpler and straight to the point uh, you have it, the more chance they get that you have of getting them into the gym. Once they're into the gym, then the magic starts happening, right? They see the colors, they see all the stuff going on, they see the happy, smiling faces and all the noise and all the cool things that are going on in your gym. And it's, it's going to be difficult for them to not do business with you. However, what we do recommend is that you use the same process when they come in the gym because we've actually seen this happen too. So when the, when the kids come into the gym with the mum, the mums, let's say they do a free trial class, which we do recommend, that seems to be a, a very good um, lead uh, magnet. Or if you don't, if you have some, another process where you know, you've got a 30 days money back guarantee or whatever it is, bring them in, do the class. When they finish with the class, um, have the coach walk them to the front desk. Remember the calculation that we did at the meet at the beginning of this meeting, that little girl is worth, if you're charging $85 a month at over 12 months is worth $1,020. Right? So if there was a bag of cash in the middle of your floor or out in the parking lot of $1,020, I'm guessing your staff and you would treat it the, with the value that it really is. And quite frankly, that little girl is worth way more than 1,020. That's just the money she's gonna be paying, paying you if she just stays with you for 12 months. What if she becomes the next team kid? What if she ends up staying with you for 16 years and spends $250 a month with you? You never know. So we need to treat them like the valuable people that they are, right? And walk the mum and your gymnast to the front desk and then the front desk does the same thing. Hey, you know, looks like you had a great time. Did you have a great time? The little girl says, yeah, this was really good. And you say, okay, mom, would you like to sign up to this class or would you like to sign up to that Wednesday class? Which one would you like to do? And, and then often mom, when I'm talking, I'm sorry, Eddie. No, it's okay. You go. Often when I'm talking with clients, um, I find out or discover that that process isn't always that smooth within the gym because they're on time restraints and they got to get to the next class and the coach is busy or this and there and they don't have that that experience of walking the child up to the front desk and um 
So I always recommend that they they figure out how they can make that happen. And with the, with your doors being closed right now and, and going to be reopening soon, this is a really good time to think about that. How can you structure when right. you're making some changes that you're going to be making anyway, how can you structure that to be sure that it happens? Because that is a, very, a really important part to being able to, to get that person to sign up or sign their child up. Yeah. And remember, we're just helping, right? So be consistent, be kind, be helpful. You know, you guys are all mums. You want consistent, kind, helpful people. And sometimes we might not be in the best of moods and we want the gym to be that little oasis of happiness, right? That, you know, I'm looking forward to taking little Jenny to the gym because, man, I love those guys. and I love seeing the smile on her face. I've had a rough day today, but, you know, I, I enjoy going down there. Be that little, that oasis and, and, and you know, put that through, you know, your gym. And many of you do that already, right? So, you know, I think we can go into some questions because we do, you know, we're kind of getting to the end of it. So, um, first of all, take some actions. Obviously, make sure you join that gymnastics marketing group if you're not already there. I'm sure most of you are by now. I've been saying it over and over again. Lots of resources in there. Lots of help. Um, uh, make sure you sign up to the Gymnastics Marketing Academy. It's a donation. We're not asking for you to spend loads of money. We're not asking you to spend any money. Spend whatever you want, but make sure that you're in there, right? If zero is what you want to give us, give us zero. If you want to give us something, give us something. Um, but you must get in there because there's 70 different lessons on how to do all of this stuff. So at the very least you can learn or you can teach your staff to do it or you've, you've at least got it, right? This is part of our, our efforts to make sure that you either can do it yourself or you can have us do it for you. The do it yourself is free because you're doing it. But we, sh we need to give you some direction and help. And this is where we're giving you help. And there's nothing held back. Everything that is in that Gymnastics Marketing Academy is stuff we use to teach our own staff. Mm -hmm. So you're getting real good information that's being updated constantly. So please, if you haven't already, uh, jump into the Gymnastics Marketing Academy. Have that as a tool. It's lifetime, right? So as long as that this Gymnastics Marketing Academy is in existence, you'll have access to it. Right? There's not going to be any monthly costs. There's not going to be any extra stuff. It will just be open to you for, for, the, for the rest of, you know, of existence, hopefully. And then finally, if you, if you don't want to do it all yourself, I still recommend that you know how to do it all yourself. But if you don't want to do it and you need some help, reach out to us and we'll be happy to um, help, you to help you open up and, and, and get going. And, and we'll get our team onto it to, to build this all out for you. And like I said, our reopening program is $500. It's a one-off cost. If you want to work with us continuously, it's $500 until you open. Um, and then after that, it goes to our regular rate, uh, which is $1,000, if I'm going to tell you, which is the equivalent of $12.50 an hour, 20 hours a week, right? So if, you, if you've got a staff member that you're going to pay $12.52, you know, $12 and they might spend 20 hours a week doing your marketing, you could just hire us instead. That's up to you. I don't want to hide anything from you. Um, but we just want you to be going. So we are here to help you reopen at a sprint and not a stagger. That is the biggest thing that I want because we need you guys to be doing really, really well. We really do. So I'm going to go back and answer some questions. I think most of the questions were answered. Um, uh, so I did see Jan, you did ask, um, do you suggest trials go into existing classes or have times? Personally, my opinion, this is just an opinion. I, I've seen both work. Um, I like going into existing classes because one, we want to fill the, those classes up. Often, you know, oftentimes, you know, the mom is coming in at a time that's probably most convenient for her and we can fill that class up. They get a little taste of, of, of the coach and, and of the kids that they might be hanging out with. Um, but I've also seen, um, you know, you know, I, I guess, uh, what is it, specific, you know, um, trial classes uh, work as well. Um, the only difficulty there is that you, it, they're not actually able to sign up to that class if they decide to. Um, so, you know, Jen, I, I would figure out what you feel best about and that you like the best. Um, but I, I personally like the thought of existing classes. I, I mean, Jessica, I don't know if you've got any. Yeah, yeah I was just going to add in that usually existing classes is how most of the clients that I work with do it. However, if someone's looking to open up an additional class, but they're not, 
So uh, what they'll do or a new class, they'll pick that time slot that they ideally want to have that class. And that'll be the free, you know, the free trial. And they'll try to push that so that they can then open up a new class with quite a few members in it already. So that they'll use those as the free trial. Yeah. For the trial class. And, um, you know, what, what I think is really important is use this, you know, when we finish this, we'll be up uploading it onto YouTube. Um, please feel free to use this as your, as a training tool for your front desk staff. If you think that this is a good thing, if, if you think that it's a bunch of crap and you, you, we haven't helped you at all, obviously ignore it. But if you think that it's useful and something you'd like to implement with your team, um, have your team do it. One thing that we've seen is that sometimes some of the front desks take a little bit of time to get used to it, right? Sometimes we see front desks struggle and push back a little bit expect that it might take a few months for them to get on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. some, de some front desks and some front desk pe workers or, or, or reps um, really embrace it and really get onto it. Others really rebel and, and kind of like don't like the extra effort that they've got to put in because they've never had to do it before. The reality is though, if you do get this, do have some kind of process that works, you're going to have a way better uh, chance of good results, right? And we know that this process works. We know that it works because it fits to the mum's schedules and what's important to them and how their life is. You know, we, we don't typically build systems out to fit with employees that don't want to you know, work with it, right? Like internally in, in our company, we build out systems that work for you guys, right? We, if, if it doesn't work for you guys, we change it. We don't build systems out that works for Jessica or Ella or our, our people internally because we're not going to ask you to conform to how we want you to operate. Um, we want to conform. We want to conform to what makes the best sense for you guys. Now, sometimes the best sense to work for you guys is something that you might not like, and we'll say it, we will explain it to you, right? But everything we do is about what is best for our customer and. What we found is this process works best for mums because it takes into account how busy they are, it gives them that follow-up process, and it talks to them on the platforms that they're most likely wanting to talk to you on, and it also talks to them in a way that lowers confusion and gives them much more of a chance to say yes, right? And it's as simple as that. Um, so, Ella, do we have any more questions? Uh, am I missing stuff? I feel like there's lots of things going in there. Um, um. No, we just had Douglas say, what about Texas? Um, but it just looks like they're just talking about the okay. reopening. And I think Lisa mm -hmm. said, where is the area where you can donate or, uh, or get for free? Um, Lisa, that's the link that I dropped, the okay. Kids Activities Marketing Academy, right above your comment. Okay. So, and Karina, I think you said existing, so there are, exactly, you know, it's, it's good for, for new kids to see some other kids that are kind of at their level, but have been in doing it a little bit time, more time. Um, you know, I, I, I just like it. Plus, you avoid that situation of having a trial class with one kid in it, right, which is not great. You want to have trial classes where kids are a part of it. And I would always try and fill a class and then get to the next class and fill it and so forth. Uh, Robin asked, we add trials to existing classes that have space so that, yep, um, I think that's, that's good. Um, any other questions? I feel like I don't want to miss anybody. If anybody has a question, post it in here now. If you don't have a question, um, we, can, we, can, we can end it. But we got, we, uh, where can I get the PDFs for the webinars from? Um, Donna, the, the, the PDFs, so there's a few things before you leave. I might have just lost eight people, okay? Um, before you leave, we've uploaded into the Gymnastics Marketing Academy all of these presentations, right? So you can actually get them as a PDF or you can get, I think we're even going to upload it as a PowerPoint. So you can get that in the Gymnastics um, Marketing Academy. We've also got a workbook for you guys to work through that highlights a whole bunch of things so you can have a look at it and start knocking things off as you're going through the list of things that we've spoken to, to you guys about over the last four days. Um, and that's going to be in the Gymnastics Marketing Academy, right? So all of those things are going to be in the Gymnastics Marketing Academy. We've loaded it out. So all you need to do is just go in. And like I said, don't be scared of the donation. If you can't afford 
to donate because of your situation, please don't make that a reason why you don't join. I'd much rather have all of you join for nothing and actually help you stay open than some of you not join because you're, you're, you're feeling bad that you can't donate. Um, uh, you know, because down the line, who knows, we might do business together because you survived. And the worst case scenario, as far as I'm concerned, is little kids in your area and parents and families get to use your services, which is really, really important, right? And if I can be a little part of helping make sure that happens, um, that's some of the goodness that we're putting into the world. So don't get hung up on anything other than learning the stuff to make a difference to, your, to yourself. So just in, in summary, I would recommend everybody to start running um, programs, to start running ads, even if it's a real low dollar number, right? Even if it's as little as, like, as Russell said, $10 a day, start getting that interest in the community, widen your pool so you get more people talking about your gymnastics gym. Make sure that we, we have people showing an interest, showing them all the wonderful things that happens in your, in your gyms. Get that interest coming in build out the list of people to call. So when you do open, when you're like a week out, start going through this five day follow up process of calling everybody and reaching out to everybody and getting them signed up. Um, so you get off to that running start and then just keep it going, right? If you can add 10 to 15 new kids every single month for eternity, it's gonna be a bit of a game changer for all of you. And it could be more than 10 to 15, right? As money starts coming in, up the amount of money that you're spending on your ad campaign. Get up to about that $25 mark. $25 is about average for most of our gyms. They get up to 25 and, and any more is kind of a waste, any less, they're not quite making the most of it. So about $750 a month, they get to that. And they can do that easy because they've got that, that, that constant flow of interest and they're growing their income and, and, it's, and it's making a lot of money. They start raising their prices. Like, like I said to you guys before, if you've got only a hundred kids in your gym and you've reduced your prices by $10, right? By $10 because you want to keep them. That's $10,000 a month. Sorry. That's a thousand dollars a month, right? That you're losing. That's a thousand dollars a month with just a hundred kids paying $10 less. That's more than 750 on Facebook, right? So what if you got five kids, 500 kids and you've reduced your prices by $10? That's 5,000 a month that you're losing. That's way more than if you spent money on Facebook and they had us working with you, right? So, you know, in some gyms that we work with find that they can raise, they can end up raising their prices 35, 40, $50 because they no longer are worried about losing people because when they lose people, they just add more. And it's just, and, and things are just so much more healthy. So with there's, that- There's sorry. a couple more questions. I'm sorry, one was uh, Karina asked if there's free trial, do we recommend free trials or paid? Um, and so Karina, we have clients that do either or so the free trials do always work, but sometimes gyms say that in their areas, it's not the best strategy for them. Um, and so we have other clients will say, okay, well, you can do a $10 trial just because it's, it's a lesser amount than the, a regular paid class. Um, and it, but there's no obligation if they decide that it's not a good fit. So you could go either way, but we, we do recommend having some sort of offer. So a, you know, a $10 trial, a free trial, a, you know, a money back guarantee, something along those lines, um, to, to, to kind of get a hook there. Yeah. So, so with that guys, um, please make sure you're all in the group. Um, we do this kind of training every, every, you know, like we normally have a much more smaller group of, of, of gyms, much more intimate. So we can actually have quick, chats and conversations about how things are going. I, I know we've only got uh, about 48 people left. I'm going to ask you for one favor, which would be nice for me. It helps my ranking on Google and everything. If you've really enjoyed this and it's been really helpful to you, go to Creatively Disruptive's uh, uh, Facebook page. So it's you know, um, facebook.com slash creatively disruptive and just write a review or recommendation, right? Just say, hey, these guys are great. They've been helpful. If that's all you do, that's a big help to us, if I'm honest with you. And I really, really appreciate anything that you can do there. Um, it just will take a little bit of your time. But it really does help our um, Google ranking and it, and it helps, you know, helps us in a lot of ways. And I, I really appreciate it if you can. If you can't, if you don't feel like you can, obviously don't. <laughs>
but that's uh that's it um we'll see you in the gymnastics um marketing group um if you have any questions please ask questions in here my team are actively patrolling it and they will actively help you they will even get sometimes we they will even get on a call with you and actually help walk you through stuff if you need it we want to be of assistance right don't turn your back on it it's there we're not asking for anything unless you decide to sign a contract with us and get into a real agreement. We just want to help. So just use those, those tools. With that, um, I think that's it. Unless anybody has anything they want to say or share. Is that it? All right, guys. It's been really good. Get Thanks, out guys. there. Make it happen. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Good luck. <laughs>